they treated us really well. Um, the food was good. And what I would hope is that he could expand that thing to anywhere and everywhere in Texas and wherever it would be welcome. His success, it only opens doors for more trio niggas. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I want, I want to ask you about the trio burgers. We went down there and hung out with Bun, ate that trio burger, and you yeah. say you ate one. Um, just... How big is that? And I think he said they sold a bunch of damn burgers this month. I just seen a, a, a thing come out of how many burgers they sold. Like mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a, a crazy number to be right, honest right. with you. But but I know the first month they say he made a million dollars. You know, like yeah. What um how do you feel about what Bun is accomplishing Trio Burgers and just how, how was your feeling when you went to Trio Burger? He treated us very well. It was one thing I felt kind of weird about, but. You know, that's maybe me asking too much. But at the same time, he treated us really well. Um, the food was good. And what I would hope is that he could expand that thing to anywhere and everywhere in Texas and wherever it would be welcome. His success, it only opens doors for more trio niggas. So I want my nigga to go as high as, you know what I'm saying, the universe and the, and the God is going to take him. Um, and, and that's what's up. I just... My legend, I just be wanting some time for people to implement it in the places that it fit. You know what I mean? Like, they play a lot of Southern music and shit. Uh, niggas got to tell me, hey, man, that shit you got ain't jamming. And it can't be true because the fans already said it have. And then the most majors nigga in life who I wanted to display my talent to was Pimp and Bun. Mm -hmm. So when Pimp told me, oh, yeah, nigga, this, this what's up. You just be having some shitty ass beats. Nobody can ever tell me different. But it's like my contribution, um, anything I do is like, it's, it's swept to the side. Like, man, most niggas had labels and, and backers and, you know what I'm saying, money from, you know, whomever to propel them to be visible. I missed the boat with the distributors when everybody was getting out there going to all the small towns. I came in just a little late. And it's my own fault because I stopped rapping for like seven years, lost in the streets on some bullshit. But I love my music. I got a I got a loyal fan base fucking with it. It's just sometimes some people I feel should line it up where it go. You know what I mean? So you telling me like the the ESGs, um, the other OG artists and shit. You telling me he's a Leo Records can't be in that playlist when curators on Spotify and all these other places, all these other playlists throws it in there without anybody telling them. Why does it belong amongst that with strangers? You know what I mean? Mm. So I just wish some niggas would give me my motherfucking card, place me where I belong, or hey, don't. I do it my goddamn self. That's what I was to say. You you definitely can do it yourself in, in these days and times. You, right. And you're doing that. Quit trying to hide a 6'3 nigga, 300 and some pound. Goddamn. <laughs> I want you to tell I'm me. I'm a lump in the rug. I want you to tell me about uh, uh, also, um, what you think about Keefe D, man, getting locked up? Uh, after 30 years, you know, 27 years or whatever, I think about 27 years, 26 years, 27, um, going on, uh, Vlad, Vlad say he's a, a investigative journalist. This is the first time that he says that his video will be used in the court of law to convict someone. Um, what do you think about that? And do you feel like this is the first time? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think it's the first time. I just think that bona fide street niggas, should not get enticed by these motherfucking cameras and these microphones. The conversations I have when I talk about crazy shit, it's more just physical little boy shit, fights and shit like that that happened 25, 30 years ago. You're talking about shit that ain't got no statute of limitations and you're sitting your big gangster ass in front of these cameras behind these microphones too comfortable incriminating yourself. I've been in entertainment so goddamn long I'm damn near knowing what I'm talking about every time I come in here, how I'm going to approach it. A gangster street nigga ain't got that type of meticulous type thought. He's a street nigga. He got thoughts of the street shit he's done. I'm not a street nigga. I was a lost kid that made some choices that wind up doing some street shit and learn how to do some gangster shit. But at the end of the day, I'm just a nigga out of PA that's a grown man that take care of his business. But these are bona fide street niggas a part of historical moments. Tupac, there'll never be another. And you comfortable talking about this shit? Yeah, man, because I was doing Writing this. Writing a book about it. Writing a book. We wrote a whole book about it. 
man, you better talk about some shit that don't make no sense. <laughs> he wrote a whole book. He wrote a book, and he went and talked about it on several platforms, um, like like Boss Talk. He went on there, and he just told him his story. Uh, that night, he was in the car. Some people say he was driving. He said he was driving. You know, it's, it's wild stuff going on with that. Allegedly, he was the drive. His nephew was at busting out the window. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, Nigga, do you know... <laughs> Do you know how many of them stories I might have? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Nigga, I'm from Port Arthur, Texas. Cadillacs over Lexus. It is what it is, and it's going to be what it's going to be, and it's going to do what the fuck it's going to do. Know what I'm talking about? 50,000 population. Niggas on top of niggas. Niggas is colliding and clashing like a motherfucker. But you think I'm going to get on some raps and go to talking about that? Man, all the street shit I did didn't even land in my raps. Because a nigga told me when I went to Houston, he told me a detrimental story about a nigga that was performing. They got Popped on stage. Damn. And you know why? Because when you cross that line talking about you're an artist, your whereabouts are promoted. Mm -hmm. Live on stage, Saturday, 10 p.m., be there, be square, bring your pistol. You know what I mean? And you on stage, you're there, you're going to be there. So if your op want to get you, goddamn, he got all the opportunity to do it. He can get you on your way in, on your way out, or he can get your ass on stage. And wow. so when a nigga told me that when I was getting back into my music, then another nigga told me some other shit. I'm like, in you window. So all my raps, I be saying some crazy ass shit. But at the same time, I'm not implementing a nigga who ain't got no voice. I got plenty of niggas that we've agreed as men, hey, we're going to let this shit die. But what if I get on raps and go to, yeah, nigga, remember I bust in your motherfucking head, fuck <laughs> your bitch, yeah, nigga. And I say, uh. 100,000, 250,000 copies. This nigga that got this memory multiplied over and over and over in his head. He going to the store to try to forget about it. Nigga passed by, blaring it out the car. His homeboys, oh, that nigga say he fucked your bitch. You know he ain't talking about you. That nigga gonna feel some type of way. That's real. That's so real. Um, So, I think I'll hit you with this question. Come on, man. Zero gonna ride blue and I'm gonna ride red. Yeah. That's what Pimp said. Yeah. Um, Red. Mm -hmm. Is were there any gangs, any gang affiliates, anything to do with gangs in the Port Arthur area? Did he just like red? I'm just going by his verse. He uh, says zero gonna ride blue, blue and, and zero. We know, you know, you hear stories of him allegedly being a part of the Hoovers or uh, uh, is what was the deal? Did did Port Arthur have? Any people down there that believe, you know, that that wrote with the the gang, the blue red blood crip thing. Most definitely, I would have to say that arrived. You know, what I'm saying early, early ninety. You know what I mean? Um, Pimp wasn't affiliated with any of that. He just you got to dig it. He's an entertainer, so he know the game. He know what's gonna spark the interest. Red turn heads. You say it all the time. Yeah. So he. He was so many steps ahead of the average person because he was an artist. He's a creator. You know what I mean? He plays instruments. You know what I mean? So he spent a lot of time cultivating and taking care of his business to become who he wanted to be artist wise. Now that street shit. Yeah, it's it's bloods and crips and P.A. It is. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of them. <laughs> Out of them 50,000, you got about what percentage is, is Bloods and Crips? Oh, shit. It's, it's, it's a small percentage because that 50,000 also is talking about, you know what I'm saying, everybody in that area. But it's a major part because that's the shit that's going to make the paper all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I know the canvas of Port Arthur that people lock their doors about. You know what I mean? People buy double barrel shotguns. Why is this, and shit. Where is this accent coming from? Hey, you man, know? I got all the time. You heard it? Hey, man, I'm also in the country, 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 country,